First, I'd like to uh, congratulate all those that are going to be uh, confirmed uh, today. It really is, as Father Jay said, a joyful day in the life of the church. Have you ever had a bad day? Yeah. What about a health issue, a problem at work, the loss of a loved one, or just feeling worn out from the hectic pace of life? I know I have, and so did the apostles 2,000 years ago. And I think that's the reason why I like this gospel passage so much. Because Peter's story, along with the apostles in the boat with him, is our story. If you think about it, they had a few bad days, didn't they? Peter denied Jesus three times, and he found the tomb empty. And even last week, though Jesus appeared to them in the upper room, as we heard that the apostles they were still kind of confused, feeling abandoned and grieving the loss of their master. And so, what are they to do? Where are they to go? You can almost hear in Peter's voice a sigh of relief when he says, I'm going fishing. He returns to the ordinary, a familiar part of his life to push aside the fears and the doubts for a short period of time. Who can blame him? We do the same thing, don't we? After Holy Week, we too can feel exhausted and inclined to go back to the ordinary. I know I am. To return to the things that we are comfortable with, perhaps even to go fishing, like Peter. The gospel mirrors our own lives when we search for the familiar during those dark moments, when we have fished all night long, when we're exhausted and we've caught nothing. Like the apostles, we might hear that vague inner voice of Jesus calling from the shoreline of our lives to cast out our nets into a different direction. But often we fail to recognize it's the voice of the Lord. It's only in that miraculous catch of the fish and ultimately the breaking of the bread, the Eucharistic meal that the apostles, that we fully and completely recognize Jesus. But Jesus is present to us in every moment of our lives, every day. But often, we don't recognize that he is there. And it's even more difficult to recognize him in the poor, the homeless, the sick, the forgotten, the marginalized. But he is there calling out to us. I have this comical picture in my mind's eye of Peter putting on his garments and jumping into the water, swimming, splashing, and waiting to get to Jesus. Why? What made Peter take that plunge into the ice-cold water? One word. Love. Peter's love for Jesus and Jesus' love for Peter. And like Peter, we too are invited to take that plunge. That same love from Jesus calls out to us in the ordinariness of our lives. Especially when we are distressed or suffering or worn out by life or simply having a bad day. We too, like the apostles, are confronted with that profound hunger and desire for hope, for forgiveness, and for that healing love from Christ. Love is calling us to love. But it is not a superficial love. It is a challenging and probing love. It is a love that tests those who take the plunge. Three times, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? 
more than these, meaning more than his former life. And three times Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But Jesus is not content with words, but with action. He tells Peter to go feed his sheep. In the same way, love is calling us, you and me, to love. Perhaps it is in the workplace, by being patient with an irritating worker, or by inviting a lonely classmate to have lunch with you at school. Or maybe it's taking one of the food bags in the narthex at the end of mass and returning it next week filled with food or perhaps participating in one of the over 60 ministries we have here at St. Elizabeth's. Love is calling us to love. (coughs) One of the ministries in need of more volunteers is to bring the Eucharist to the residents at Christian Healthcare. The residents are always grateful to receive Jesus and the gift of our presence, But I must admit that when I go to visit them, I feel that I am the one receiving the blessings and the graces. You see, it gives me an opportunity to see Christ in the sick and in the elderly. I'm amazed that it is the residents who bring Christ to me in their joy and in their suffering. I see Christ in them, and it brings me joy. Love is calling us to love. There's a beautiful story of a Hindu gentleman who was doing the same work as Mother Teresa. The difference he notes was that he was doing it for something. Mother Teresa was doing it for someone. She knew that by serving others, she was serving Christ himself. And Mother Teresa would go on to say, unless we see the face of Christ in the Eucharist, we fail to see him in the poor and in the suffering. For those of you that are being confirmed today, you will be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that will give you the power and the courage to go out these doors to be loved to be loved for others. That source of love is always on the seashore of our lives. Today, I want you to picture Jesus standing on the Sea of Tiberias next to that charcoal fire with food prepared, his body and blood. Love is calling out to you and me Do we recognize his voice? Are we willing to take the plunge and jump into the water like Peter? Are we willing to say, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Are we willing to follow him? God bless you.